action. Uptick time. We're talking about uptick. I've been trying to start with a little tune every, you know, okay. at the start. So just that was my like, you know, what I was thinking about. You know what we're going to talk about here at Demo of Uptick. Yep. I'm here, and you're Saurabh? Yes. Wadwa, Saurabh Wadwa, and Saurabh, you're a senior sales engineer That's at, gotta... at Uptick. So, okay, yep. let's check out the demo. I want to first hear what is Uptick because it's a new company to me. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, not many people know about the company. The company has been in existence for close to six years now. Oh. Uh, it started out as an EDR platform, but then it uh, now the platform does... Uh, solves various use cases and consolidates a lot of uh, different tools. So you can categorize Uptix as CNAP. Uh, so CNAP oh, would, okay. would consist of like cloud security posture yeah. management. Then you have your cloud workload protection plus XDR. So extended oh, detection and response. Okay. So in a gist, that's what the platform does. Right? So you so do you develop modules to put them together that you provide to your customers, or is it a different approach to a CNAP? Where, because I'm just thinking of like CNAPs that I've come across, mm -hmm. like they essentially kind of work as a platform. Yes, so it's a platform, right? So we are based on OS Query, uh, it's operating system query, and it was a uh, open source framework started by Facebook, but now it's owned by the Linux Foundation. Okay. And what it does is, um, once it's deployed on a machine, right? Whether it's a server, a, con a container a laptop, you can query the machine like a relational database. So it's as simple ah. as select stuff from processes. Oh, that's so what Uptix easy. did, uh, we based our product on OS query and built on top of that. So is that what we're looking at here, what you built on top of OS query? That's correct. So we, we cover um, different attack surfaces or I would say different sources of data, right? We protect your user laptops, endpoints, or your production workloads, which can be your uh, servers running on-prem, um, virtual machines, your you know, like EC2 instances in AWS or virtual machines running in GCP Azure. And then we also secure your cloud infrastructure. Uh, that's where CSPM comes into the picture where we get the data for your different cloud services. We look for any misconfigurations, deviations from the baseline. We have the capability to run uh, compliance checks. We can do identity risk analysis for AWS, right? And then we also protect containers right from the time they're getting built. Oh, okay. From the build time. From build time to runtime. So we can oh. do continuous uh, runtime monitoring for vulnerabilities, compliance, and, uh, uh, and uh, threats, right? This is like your Kubernetes overview. Right? Okay. So whether it's um, an EKS, GKE, and Azure. Okay. What we do is, this is a cluster level view, right? And we detect vulnerabilities within a Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So here, uh, the, the clusters with the vulnerabilities are highlighted red. Uh, if okay. I click on this particular namespace, it will show me what pods are, run, uh, are running with a vulnerability, right? Does it show the severity of the class of the? That's correct. Yeah, oh. I'll click on the vulnerability option, and then it will show what CVEs were detected. Oh. Here is the CVSS score, so it's medium, right? And we'll show if it's exploitable, and if a fix is available or not. If it's in memory, will it be extreme? For example. So what for? If a malicious process is running, right? We can do forensics on that, so we can carve out the process running in memory. And we can do file carving as well. That's for uh, forensics purposes once. But what would be an extreme CVE then? Uh, extreme would be, I would say, 9.8, 10. Okay. And what would that be, for example? Something that, like, how do you rate it? So we, uh, we subscribe to a database, vulnerability database, which comes with the CVSS scores, right? And, uh, but we're also working on... So that helps you score it? Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's move on, yeah. yeah. And so this... Vulnerability is a part of these different images. From If I click on this image, it will tell us, okay, what containers are using this image. And from that information, we can go down to the level on what node are those containers running. Because in a Kubernetes infrastructure, right, you can have hundreds or probably thousands of nodes, and you want to pinpoint on what exactly are those malicious containers running. 
so we can show you that information as well. And for Kubernetes, we also have like you know, compliance capabilities uh, where we look for any NSA hardening guidelines and we'll tell you if your uh, Kubernetes cluster is actually uh, meeting those guidelines or not. Plus we also have compliance checks such as CIS, SOC 2, PCI in order to you know, like make sure that you're compliant. So that's what we do. And uh, we have taken a shift lift approach. We do build time scanning. Uh, developers use tools like Jenkins, uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, when they um, upload the images to a repository like JFrog, Artifactory, Docker Hub, ECR, we scan those registries for vulnerabilities plus, plus also secrets. So as a developer, I might like I might leave secrets, you know, uh, embedded like uh, my credential secrets. We can detect that as well. Plus, once the production, uh, once the workload goes into production, we do continuous real-time scanning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like we also, as I mentioned, that we do detections, like looking for something malicious within running within in a container. Containers. Yes. We our rules are mapped on the MITRE attack framework, right? And we can detect different tactics and techniques that the attackers might use. So I'll show you how a container rule looks like. So for example, if an anonymous request is coming into a Kubernetes cluster, right? So looking at the security events, we make that judgment if the username is anonymous, we'll give you an alert. So we, okay. can, we can detect use cases such as a container escape, which is a classical use case, right. uh, using the data that we collect from the containers. Well, great. Well, Saurabh, thank you very much for taking some time to, to show us uptext. I appreciate uh, it. Thank you for having me here, Alex. You're welcome. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.